So we go back to the shootout. This is where it counts. This is Lewis Kent that's just launching 5.95 over the first 100 metres. The quicker cars are now coming. They're rolling up to the grid. Lewis Kent taking a bit of inside the earth there as well. I don't know whether there'll be any left after we've seen the uh, Dakar vehicle digging a fair bit of dirt out. And uh, it's going to be now about uh, what the order is in the shootout final. We are there. This is it. This is the hill climb, climb competition proper. Fastest uh, at the moment is Rick Wood in the V8 supercar, the Holden Commodore. Uh, but we are going to see some big improvements on that as we continue because we're now getting into a, a faster group. Now, Lewis Kent, uh, TCR champion last year and running this new car, the uh, Felister. NTCR, and he is uh, fifth fastest at the moment, so doesn't quite go to the highest pace, but they're all quite close at this stage. We're going to start getting into some pretty rapid machinery. Now, this is the hydrogen electric mixed machine. This is where hydrogen and air actually combine to generate electricity. It is an amazing piece of kit. It's the future of some of the types of vehicles that they're hoping to get into Formula, well, into Le Mans in the coming years. It's been a development for the last couple of years, and it is an amazing machine. Listen, just listen. Very different sound, of course, it's an electric, but it isn't fully charged beforehand. It does carry a battery, but it generates its own electricity from the hydrogen held in its tanks around the driver. This is the point in commentary, Ben, where I wish I'd gone to school because it's so incredibly technical, the way that this car performs, the way that it produces power. Is it the future? It's almost like a rolling test bed of technology that's happening now. The H24 Green GT is yeah. an interesting vehicle, but I do not understand it. No, well, I had a quick look at it yeah, yesterday, and it's quite an impressive machine. Very different, of course, with the technic technological layout of it. It goes across the line sixth quickest, so it's certainly not the fastest, but still a good effort. Now, we're looking at one of these super touring cars, heading out the Honda Accord, number 172. So Stuart White's going to see what he can do now in a car that Tom Christensen used to win races with back in 2000. And a time when touring cars were I spent a lot of money on, I have to say, high, high budgets in touring cars back then. Yeah, a little bit, um, oh, how shall I say, I won't say slow, but 6.23 over the first 100 metres isn't going to do it for him. Uh, he's going to have to work extremely hard if he's going to put himself on the leaderboard with, the, uh, with this car. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it is a, a touring car. Uh, they're two-litre engines, they're race engines, but they weren't massively powerful. So we are going to see certainly quicker cars. It's good through the corners, though, and that's where it can gain a little bit of speed. But uh, yes, you're right, I don't think this is going to be an outright pace setter. Let's just see what it, he does as he comes over. It's a 52.86, so he goes fifth fastest now. Stuart in the Honda. Plenty more cars to come. The last being, or last one scheduled, is the McMurty Automotive Spearling. Now, this is, now this is a quick car. It is. This is the, sh the Shadow Formula One car. And uh, Ewan Ferguson has put in a couple of good runs already this weekend. So let's see whether he's going to be able to set a quicker time than we've seen so far. I think it could be possible because it's the Holden Commodore having done that. 51.7 uh, so far. I reckon we may be seeing a car into the 40s, potentially. Remember, the outright pace at the final shootout on a Sunday here in the past. The record is in a Formula 1 car set by Nick Heidfeld. And that was a 41.6 in 1999. But it was in an up-to-date, pretty up-to-date uh, Formula 1 car at the time. This, of course, is an older car. Back in 1979, this car comes from. Let's see, is it now? quite going to make it no, to the 40s. Definitely not going to make it to the 40s. Comes to the line, stop the clock. He's Second doesn't... position at the moment, but um, that's going to be uh, usurped by quite a few cars as we roll on there. <laughs> this is a big beast. It is indeed. This is uh, a NASCAR. Uh, this is Ed Berrier who's driving this car. And this has actually been modified to run up the hill here. I was talking to the guys earlier. It's not in its original NASCAR trim. It's actually been modified quite extensively to make it much more drivable. And Ed himself is a very experienced uh, NASCAR racer, not at the highest level, sort of next level down. He raced for some 17 years in NASCAR in the States. He's 60 years old now, but the American knows what it takes to drive one of these big cars. And 
Let's see how it's going. Sounds. Yeah, it was quite neat through Malcolm. I've got to say, for a car of this size, Malcolm Corner is a really, really tricky corner. Some people just get into it a little bit early and clip a bit too much grass, and then it drops away from you as you come out of the, the left-hander. But you need that launch up the hill. You've got to keep the power in. And I think that's where some of the uh, slightly smaller but more powerful vehicles, power to weight is everything up a hill climb here. Over the line, then he gets the... Uh, top position at the moment with that it was a good run actually 5139 for a car of that size it's got plenty of grunt but it looks like it's a bit of a handful so for new fastest time but we still haven't quite got into the 40s so are we going to see somebody else managing to do that Seb Perez is next up into number uh, 214 entry and this car has won rallies in Catalonia and Corsica with Marco Martin over the years so this is built as a rally car but remember rally cars often run on tarmac monte carlo rally and other rallies that are pure tarmac so they have great pace and we'll Let's see what seb perez can do see what his line's going to be through here yeah plenty of grass plenty of grass on the inside plenty of grass on the outside Will that, yeah even more you know rally cars are always going to try and take liberties and uh, cut the corner but it's a question of whether they can find the traction as well it's been dry all day so maybe there is enough traction out there for this thing to be able to pick up the pace where he needs to through the corner already and again Plenty of inside and outside grass that he's taking everywhere. So really, this car's being used exactly, pro exactly in my view, how it should be. Yeah, and I think this is going to be representative time for him. He's very close to the times we've seen already from Ed Berrier. Different, different kind of car, of course, to that big American NASCAR to the Ford Focus World Rally car. And it's going to be a similar kind of time. Is it going to be enough? I'm not sure it is. Not he quite. goes third. Yeah. yeah. Good run, though. 52.14 seconds you don't get the feeling you could have got any more out of it no that was a good run as you say he was accurate he was pushing hard right from the beginning and that is the far well third fastest at the moment we still at uh, this moment got the nascar the chevrolet camaro as fastest ed berrier is the fastest at this stage now anthony reed is lining up in what was david leslie's car although funnily enough he drove one of these cars himself back in the day and Anthony Reid has been the fastest man here at Goodwood in the past. He won't be today because, as we say, these super tourings, although they're wonderful, they're not going to be the pace setters. We know that the outright pace, pace setter today is like to be a very, very different machine as long as it runs reliably in the final stages. It's going to be an electric machine. He kept it on the tarmac right till he was trying to squeeze every millimetre out of every corner there and trying to keep the pace right in the car. The first couple of corners were very, very good. The launch wasn't quite so sharp. It just didn't seem to get off the line in the way that you would want it to do. In fact, it was a 6.15 over the first 100 metres. So uh, quite a bit down on the quicker cars so far. He won the shootout here at Goodwood back in 2007. And in 2012 was the last time that he won it. So... Ten years ago, since Anthony last won it, he's not going to win it this time, and he was close to the wall there, wasn't he? He goes sixth fastest in the Nissan. Yeah, he didn't leave a lot on the table when it came to the flip wall, that's for certain. But a decent run, a little bit of flame pouring out the back as he backs off the throttle. And so shootout-wise, we are well into it now, but the, as I say, the faster cars are still to come. Yes, we're beginning to see some of the quicker machinery that is lining up. We've got some modern GT cars that are about to head up the hill now. Kevin Estra is next up in the Porsche 911 GT2 RS. A very competitive regular racer in GTs. And this is obviously a very quick modern car. So yeah. now I think we are going to be starting to see cars get into the 40s. 5.0 off the line over the first 100 metres. So. Uh Certainly his launch was to be expected, I suppose, from this Porsche. He's just watching through the left-hander. A little bit of a flick there. It wasn't perhaps quite oh. as tidy as it could have been. It shows how hard he's pushing it. Yeah, if he pushed it just that fraction harder, Malcolm might have had a, a bit of a connection coming his way. So, leaving nothing on the table. This is what counts. It is the final at the end of the day. This is a shootout. This is the one that... Everybody wants to find their best performance of the week for. Over the line. And let's have a oh, look. Oh, yes. 51.05. He's gone fastest. Still just outside that 40-second barrier. A couple but of places where he could have perhaps picked up just a tenth maybe here and there, but uh, pretty much he...
got as much as he could have done out of the Porsche in that particular instance. Back down at the start line then. Yeah, we're just waiting for the next group of cars to get themselves ready to go. Here we go. Beckoned to the uh, yard of bricks. Ferrari next up. This is the new 488 challenge car. It's a, a car that is very much designed for competition. And Ferrari, of course, providing these cars that uh, people can run as a one-make series effectively and very competitive. So there we are looking at uh, the, the best times so far. And Kevin Estre up there at a 51.045. That is the pace to beat at this stage. So the Ferrari, he'll be setting up his launch control and all the other aids that he will have in this uh, modern-day monster. James Swift, it is, behind the wheel. Oh, that did get off the line well then. I'd like to see what that was. 5.01 it was for the first 100 metres. It seemed quicker than that to me, but there you go. The clock doesn't lie. Oh, that's quite neat as well. Very neat and tidy. Yep, no, he's got a good, smooth rhythm going here in the Ferrari. Let's see how he heads up. 128 mile an hour through the track. 22.6 through the intermediate one. That's one of the quickest I've seen. In fact, that is the quickest I've seen so far through intermediate one. So we could be on for a, a new pace setter here from James Swift in the Ferrari 488. Can he beat that 51.04? That is the target at this stage. It's going to say, be close. I would say he's got this covered. Over the line he goes, and it is a 50.10. So we're still just outside that 40-second bracket. But he does go fastest. Or second fastest, sorry. Uh, no, fastest now. 51.04 with the second fastest for Kevin Estre. Fastest now for James Swift at a 50.10. And everybody now just watching to see how this battle is going to progress. But I think everybody is also aware of the McMurtry Automotive feeling that has set the pace this weekend. It will be the last car that we will see coming up the hill. This and is the collecting area at the top of the hill where all the stars and cars will be uh, parked up, ready to go. Ah, oh, here we go. This is the 4 Series yeah, the competition M4. coupe. And it's... Um, Good, I kind of like the understated grey, I've got to say, and this will be a fast car. Now, we'll see. It's a big car, though. It's a heavy car. It's going to be two tonnes, I'll bet, even though it's uh, an M. So, Jörg Weidinger is the driver of this one, and it's suitable that we've got one of the M4s doing the battle because we're celebrating the M's cars this weekend. And he's just waiting for the signal from the marshals that it is... Time to set off. Very dramatic looking modern BMW, isn't it? I've got to say, uh, the, the front end of the BMWs is, uh, is, is something that inspires thought and talk, but that seems to suit the front end of this M4. Yeah, so there is just a little moment as we wait for them to get Come him under orders. set on his way. Yeah. So looking to. Race control before they give the order. Still it is at the moment, 50.10, 123.5 miles an hour at the top of the hill yep. for James Swift. As again, so. we wait for race control to give us the all clear on the hill. There will be a reason for that. We don't know what it will be, but it is the M4 CSL that's um, next to go up the hill. The shootout is well underway, and the next car that's going to be heading up is the BMW 
M4 CSL, so we've got a really modern machine. We've got such a variety of cars coming up the hill here at Goodwood, from ancient historic cars to the very latest. And York Weindinger is taking up this new BMW M4 CSL. It has an output of some 500 horsepower, 650 newton meters Oy. of torque, and he's pushing it on hard. He certainly is, there's no doubt about that. The Coupe M4 is properly underway. It's got a lot of horsepower, but it's a big and it's a heavy car even though it's a CSL, but the fact of the matter is Weidlinger is absolutely slinging it all over the track. We've got grass on the inside, grass on the outside. Now he's got the gas open and he goes up to the flip. Oh, that was neat through there. I'll tell you what, he didn't do uh, didn't leave any inches available for anybody to slip up the inside of him there. He's Lots taking away the straw, yeah, straw for the bales and he's heading up towards the line. So he's got to beat 50.10 if he's going to go fastest over the line. He goes and it's not quite enough. It's a 51.12. Close, not close enough. So for the moment, James Swift remains the fastest in the Ferrari 488 Challenge. Another modern uh, sports racing car. It was well, a good effort, though, that one. Well, I think the M4 is a fast car, but it's a big car, and it looked just a little bit too much like a road car in that situation, which, of course, it is. Uh, six seconds to cover the first 100 metres, so he lost a, a second and a half, really, at the launch, if you like, as well. So, um, despite the fact it's a pretty-looking car, it wasn't quick enough off the mark. And then he took on a bit of grass here and there as well, which will have just uh, thwarted the forward momentum. Andy Middlehurst in the Nissan Skyline. So now we're back to the kind of car that was a great winner back in the late 80s and early 90s, but still watch it. This is an iconic racing machine, the Nissan Skyline. Andy Middlehurst, a very rapid driver. So let's keep an eye. You can see he's pushing on hard. Yeah, the drifters love these cars, and I think it was them that really had taken them out of the marketplace. There's hardly any of them around now, Skylines. It's a, they're a difficult car to find if you should want one, but they're very popular in drifting and still very, very quick in its day. This was the car to have. First sector was pretty strong, the second sector likewise, but I'm not sure he's going to have quite enough pace to become fastest of all. Good Lord, though, five seconds over the first 100 metres. That's true, it's going to be pretty close, but as he comes over the line, no, it's not enough. 51.32. Fourth. Fourth place for Andy for this stage, but a good effort. We've still got plenty more quick cars to come, but everything is building up to the electric hypercar, the McMurty Automotive. That's certainly something we'll be watching. But now we've got Florent Muller, and I tell you what, Florent is very quick in this machine. This is the Dodge Viper GTS R of 2001 with a V10 engine out of the front, eight liters, and it really does shift very quickly indeed. Got to get it stuck to the tarmac, though. That's the bit that counts. Forward momentum rather than wheel spin. And this thing really does create some wheel spin when he asks for full throttle. That first sector was OK. Second sector, yeah, oh, strong. Oh, he was neat through Malcolm, you know. Really, really very neat through there. Didn't waste any time, didn't waste any space. So that was a, a beautiful left-hander at Malcolm. Let's have a look and see what he's got. 36-3 at the intermediate two split. Not a bad time, I've got to say, but uh, will it be quick enough? I think this is quick enough to take the top spot, you know. He's going to use all the that, momentum. He's going to use all that 700 horsepower that this car develops, and he's over the line, yep. he goes fastest. We've got the first 48, car nine, seven. in the 40s, 48-9-7, yep. and he has taken the top spot for now, but we are expecting to go below that figure. Now we've got a, another modern Porsche with Timo Bernhard driving it and Timo Bernhard another superstar driver over the years this is the RSR 18 it's got the four litre classic listen what wow. a great start wow. of the line well I think it might have uh, been a lot of noise but let's take a look 5.37 so it wasn't as great a start as it sounded or looked he raced this car at Le Mans Timo Bernhard with Roman Dima and Sven Muller in 2018, but it's a very different story from doing a 24-hour race to doing a rapid sprint yeah, up one, the hill. 1.1 miles he's got to cover again. Looking pretty neat round at Malcolm. Let's have a look at the second split. As we wait for him to pass the lights and break the beam. It's clean, it's tidy, but I'm not sure it's going to be no, that much quicker. Six. It's OK, 36-6, that's not a bad time, but I don't know whether it's going to be uh, top spot for the moment. Oh. To the line, here he comes. Second place, perhaps, as a prediction from me. Third, as Third. it turns out, 50.35. So, for now, there's still a bit of performance to be found. 
of that 48 9 Here we 6. Go. Now, this is going to be quick. Nick Heidfeld, who is driving this, who has had the record here and he, in some ways still has the official Sunday record Ooh. here at Goodwood. Tell you what, that was a lot. Of, if it hooks up, this thing is going to be quick. It looks like a stealth fighter, doesn't it? really does. This is the, the next machine. generation of Formula E car, but we know the Formula E cars are very rapid Ooh. electric single-seaters. Look at the way it twitches. Indeed, well, that's because he's got so much power down on it. He's absolutely throwing out horsepower, or the equivalent of at the moment. Mahindra, of course, were Moto3 winners back in Motorbike GP. Oh, that was close. Moto3, and they dropped out of Moto3 to spend all their money oh, on EV off. vehicles. Yeah, he's backed off, and it's happened again, because ev nearly every run he's done with this car that has gone wrong at some stage. And what a shame for Nick Heidfeld, because that was going very rapidly. Well, he got a 5.1 launch in the first 100 yards, a 22.7 intermediate split, and that's in amongst the best that we've seen so far. So um, it was in the ballpark for a great finish. Yeah, but sadly, it hasn't actually worked out. And let's have a look here. It wasn't a problem that he made. It was something mechanical. It had a wobble and well, then just I, died down. Thing is, with most of these um, very technical EVs, they shut themselves down as soon as there's the slightest sensor problem that uh, they may have found. And um, whatever it was, the other thing is with some of these electric cars as well, you've got to be careful. Um, when they break down of what has become live yeah You've got the light on top there which gives um, the marshals and the uh, tenders to to know whether it's safe to touch things and uh, maneuver things and hook things up to the uh, vehicle as well so let's just uh, have a little look at what was going on and we'll just listen into the ride here And you could just, just hear cut out. Yeah, it suddenly just, nothing. You've got a load of rocks that went up underneath the um, fenders, if you like, and uh, after that point, it just cut out, and uh, Nick Heidfeld was left with nothing else to do except coast into place. So that's a bit of a disappointment for... He's on a get-you-home mode now, isn't he? It's, um, it's running back up the hill for him, so he will clear the track. We won't have a pause or a red flag, thankfully, because it looks like he's going to clear the course. He is very aware that today he may well lose the official shootout uh, record that he set back in 1999 at 41.6 seconds. That has been beaten in the past on a Saturday, but uh, unfortunately, it's not his time today. So... That was the end of the run for Nick, and they're going to get that Mahindra Formula E car out of the way. The marshals will have to get to the, a safe, safe place. So for now, we've still got uh, that rapid run that was done by Florent Muller in the Dodge Viper. That has set the pace that we've got at this point, and the target time that we have of 48 point nine six seconds but as we know there was a much faster time set earlier on today yeah anticipation at trackside here you can see our commentary position in the middle of your screen there that's the goodwood festival of speed uh, pedestrian bridge over the track so you can cross from side to side this is the only place you can cross from side to side in the middle of the track during um, the action so Everybody stayed for the action trackside as well. It's a big, good to see everyone trackside under the sun, sun kissed. And thank you very much to all of the marshals and everybody at trackside that's been marshalling very respectfully and very reasonably, I must say. It's always a difficult job, isn't it, when you pull that string across and hold back uh, tens of thousands of people. But it has to be done for safety, of course. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being so uh, kind and considerate when it comes to marshals just marshalling in the way that they must yeah lovely to see but it's great that everybody is just soaking up the atmosphere at the moment enjoying the fun and games giving us a wave as we look forward to the final uh, part of this shootout because we are going to get into the fastest cars coming up very shortly we should be seeing jensen button coming up pretty soon in what's called the first corner FC1X, and that's another of the electric-powered machines. It's a rallycross uh, car, and that's been putting in some pretty rapid speeds already. We've got a Porsche GT3 Cup car as well.
but uh, it's all looking very exciting. Let's go down to Rachel and David. Well, it's getting a bit lively down here at the start line. We've had a little bit of a problem. We're getting underway, aren't we, with the fastest cars now, the final 10 possibly in the shootout. But we've had a bit of a problem somewhere up the hill by Nick Heidfeld, David. Yeah, well, I actually feel sorry for Jensen Button there because you could see him really getting himself G'd up for the run. He closed the door, he did a little practice start there, and now he's had to reset, switch the car off, tyres are cooling down. Very not ideal for Jensen, but even worse for Nick. He's somewhere out on the, on the stage now. He's not going to get a time, and he may see his record go today. Yeah, that was more important, wasn't it, that its record is, is set to be broken. And like I was mentioning, we have a few more of the really fast cars coming now. And, David, I'm thinking there's maybe three or four who can challenge for the lesser podium places. It definitely looks like that top spot is going one way and one way only to Max Chilton, of course, and the McMurtry racing team there. But who do you think is going to be battling it out for the final few places? It looks like 40. 45.46 is the time to beat there. Yeah, Justin Law, don't ever rule him out. He's an absolute master on this hill. He'll be going up there. Big car, it's going to be taking up a lot of the road. Not like the McMurtry, which almost makes this track look bigger than it is. Um, they'll all have to reset now. They'll all maybe take the helmets off, sit back. I don't know how long it's going to take, but it's going to be an exciting run to the final, final car up the hill. It's so exciting. And what is a little bit different as well about this time, of course, they have to start down there, but they do get a bit of run up just to warm those tyres up. But it is Jensen Button then over there who's ready to get his hill run started. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Rachel. Well, uh, it's certainly going to be an exciting finish as we get ready for this last little sequence of cars to be heading up the hill. And there's a couple of very quick electric machines We've got that uh, Jaguar XJ, XJR12D of, as well that has always gone well here. That will be uh, Justin Law, who has taken the fastest time in the past. Lovely to see the wave. People coming in and enjoying the look for the next car heading up that hill. So here we go then, everybody's getting very excited about the uh, final runs and Jensen Button is the next man that we're going to be watching, Keith, in this very quick electric rallycross <laughs> machine. Oh. Look at it go. Yeah, that really picks up now. It is going to be interesting over the first 100 metres. Wait for it to click the 4.21. That is by far and away the fastest off the line over the first 100 metres through turn one. This guy knows how to drive a car, no doubt about that, and he's using all of the track and the grass. He looks so smooth, so under control. This thing is fast for a bigger vehicle. Yeah, it's electric, but it's a 1,000 horsepower so it's got amazing drive and he's been really showing us he's got great pace with it he's Not quickest at the first split 21 5 3 so he's quickest at the first split let's wait and see what he can do malcolm was uh, a bit hectic but he got through it quick another formula one champion here this weekend of course joining a whole group of them but this is not a formula one car but he seems to be getting his head around it completely it's a, an area that he's getting involved in more and more he's going to win this by a little way he's going to be the fastest up to date i should say at this point there's no doubt in my 47, mind 47 9 4 yeah, incredible so fastest that is car on the hill so far that is the fastest pace up to date and Jensen Button sets the target now for the remaining machines that we've got. We've got uh, some very interesting cars, most notably the McMurtry Automotive Spearling coming up last with Max Chilton to drive it. He's still got a few cars up ahead of him and he's got to get that brain set absolutely right. And uh, oh, well, they managed to get out of the way. <laughs> Only just. <laughs> We've seen that before, but that was a brilliant drive, you know. It really, really, he got the best out of the car on the difficult parts of the track. He's certainly the turn in and the exit on all of the corners that we were watching him on here from our commentary position looked very, very good indeed. So Jensen Button showing a bit of class, I feel, there. Now, Adam Smalley is the driver of this. He's a youngster, 21 years old, but I tell you what, he's got great potential for the future. He's already a champion from the Ginetta GT4 and a Ginetta Junior champion. So he's a driver who's building his professional career right now. This will mean a huge amount to him to be taking this Porsche up the hill. And he's really going oh, for it. Wheelie? Do you see wheelies off the Porsche? Hang on a second. I thought that was a motorcycle domain. Oh, brilliant. Trust a youngster to be treating a Porsche with such disdain. Incredible, he's on the grass oh. again. This is not going to be fast, he's got a 
half surely on that. But brilliant. He's a real clown. 21-8 at the first split. That's fantastic. 35-4 at the second split. I tell you, this is not bad. If he makes it up the hill, he's going to be second. Surely he cannot pick that pace back up. He's lost a little bit of time here and there. Over the line then. Blast through. Oh, he does make it. He Look has. 47-9-1. Wow. That is outstanding. 47-9-4 it was for Jensen. 47-9-1 for Adam Smalley. What an inspired drive. He deserves to, <laughs> deserves all the accolades you can find for him. I can't believe the wheelie off this Porsche when that, it jumps out of the ditch, the, the, the side of the track. Wait for it. There we go. Yeah, that was fabulous stuff from Adam and uh, well deserved the fact that he has now just taken the top spot by three hundredths of a second. He's not, uh, he's not on the grass by a bit, Ben. He's <laughs> properly a tyre on the grass. Now, we've got a really good driver in this one too. Another man who has been fastest here over the years. But what is this you're looking at? Well, it's, it's the new Supervan. It's the Ford Supervan 4. Seen for the first time here at Goodwood, following in the tradition that Ford have produced these Supervan sporting versions of their vans over the years but nobody had seen it until this weekend and this is another all electric machine as you can hear because you can't hear an engine you just hear a screech as the tires set it off on route the equivalent of 2,000 horsepower from the four electric motors that are driving this forward Dumas of course is the quickest man on a Saturday 39.9 before but uh, Romain Dumas this time around, I wonder what it's... That's a 4.2 launch. That is as fast as Jensen Button. These EVs really get up and go from the start, don't they? Yeah, and his first interval is actually quicker. So I think he's got the good potential here to actually take that top spot for now. I'm not sure it's going to be quite enough in the end when we've got the fastest vehicles out there. But nonetheless, Roman Dumas knows this place better than almost anybody, having delivered so many great results here. Such a top competitor to in all line. forms of motorsport. 46.58, 46.58, that just built and built through the 1.1 hill climb. Oh, of course, absolutely. What did Sabine Schmidt say? I could do that faster in a van. <laughs> well, it has been done. He's gone fastest for the moment, 46.58 in the super van. But yeah. next up, we've got a, a, a some very different vehicles. We've got another Porsche coming up next. So let's see how this goes. 46.5. That is an impressive time. So closer we get to the time. Remember, the time set by Max Chilton in the McMurtry Automotive Spearling was 39.1 earlier on today. And that we've just seen is a 46.5 from the Supervan. So this is going to be another big challenge. We'll see how it goes. Oof. Richard Leach. Quick off the line hooked up what's it done over the first hundred meters 4.37 so it's in the ballpark it has electrical power as well and you can see and hear that it's got great performance as it climbs up the hill it's amazing how many of these vehicles are electric and delivering these high speeds Richard is keeping it smooth it's, it's not running too much on the grass intermediate one is underneath Roman Dumas by some considerable margin, so if he carries on with this kind of performance past a flip wall, this could be your new number one. It's looking very good indeed. 33-36 it was at intermediate two, so he's dropped, to, uh, uh, dropped him by another second. He's going to go top with this, I'm sure. Yeah, 45.5. He has gone fastest. Richard Litz in the Porsche 718 GT4 E performance. Another electric-powered motor has gone very quickly indeed and has taken that top spot for now. But now we're going to have a very different kind of machine. Right back from the 1990s, we're going for a Group C Jaguar sports car, the sort of cars that raced at Le Mans in the 1990s and at Daytona in 1993. And it's been driven by Justin Law, who's a former pace setter, has won this shootout here at Goodwood in the past. Last year, he was right on the pace and he crashed out. So can he keep it all together? Well, he was just half a second off the launch time of Richard Lights a little bit earlier on, so that first 100 metres. But he's he's probably about a second off now at the first intermediate split. So unfortunately, the EVs seem to have it at the moment. The electric vehicles are so quick. He was uh, clean through there. That's where it went wrong for him last year. So that section has gone well, but you're right. I'm not sure this is going to be enough to beat the target. 45.5 is the target over the line. 45.8. Well, he's close but it didn't quite work out.
I think this is the struggle we're going to see over the years, isn't it? EV versus slightly um, traditional motors and traditional power units. It's a real struggle for supremacy here on the hill. 1.1 miles in, covered in 45.81 seconds by Justin Law. But isn't it exciting to see a Group C Jaguar from that era, from the 1990s, able to set Still that kind of pace? able to. Exactly right. Just goes to show you how good it was in its day, in its era. Yeah. Classic machine indeed. We've seen plenty of classic cars here at Goodwill all weekend. And it's lovely to see one of those classics actually right at the top of this battle that is going on right now. Now, here's a oh, really strange machine. And you'll be wondering what on earth this is. Well, this is the Gymkhana GL wagon. Travis Pastrana, who's a very experienced off-roader in particular, uh, very talented. This has got a 2.3 flat four-cylinder turbo engine, some 860 horsepower. Let's listen up as he gets ready to go. Oh, that's a launch and a half. 100 metres in, watching over the 100 metres, 4.32. That's not quite the fastest Romain Dubas with the quickest over that period. But look at the way he works his car. I can't believe how soft the suspension is everywhere. And you can see those aero devices that spring up when he's on the brakes just to kind of slow the car down, push the car into the ground, get the air. As an assister, through Malcolm we go. Oh, that was Bit sideways there. Yeah, we could see the correction. You were looking out the window. Oh, you should have seen it from the window. No wonder they're clapping. Oh, oh nearly clipped the bail. No, right next to the flip wall. This is a great drive. Yeah, yeah the car is capable of beating everyone else. We'll see. 34-0. He's right on it. He's the fastest in the second sector. Does he go for it? 45. 45-5 is the one to beat. 46-2. He just loses the time. Drops into third place. But that was one of those drives where you think if it was just down to style and skill you should win you can see those flaps they fly up on the on the brakes so when he goes on to the brakes the, they automatically switch in it's an electronic system and look how <laughs> out of shape he was but he kept the foot in uh, that was the bit that you saw from the outside and we were watching from inside we could see the opposite lock and uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful machine. He was runner-up here last year, but I think he was pretty happy with the way that that went. Look at him. Yeah, it was sideways, uh, Travis. Now, this is Ben Mitchell in uh, an older Formula 2 car, BMW-powered, and I'll tell you what, he's been putting in some great runs up the hill. The, the start wasn't perfect. Of course, he's trying to get the best out of those two rear wheels. This 1982 Formula 2 car, he is going to nail it up through this next section, I can tell you. Well, I think you've just said it really. When you try to put it through two rear wheels, it doesn't matter how big the slick is, when you're up against an EV that's got that linear power, putting it through four wheels, it's a real struggle to try and beat them off the line. It was a five-second first hundred metres, that's for certain, and he's leaving nothing on the table when it comes to performance through Malcolm Up then to the flint wall, he's already there. Yeah, he's driving hard. You can saw 33 that 33.8 through that. Um, so he's, he's actually quicker than Travis Pastrana up on the top half of the course on this car. I don't think it's going to be quite enough, but let's have a look. Ben has put in a great effort here. 45. Not bad at all. That's a great second position. 45.64, so second place for now. Good effort. But we've only got one more to go. One more car to go. And it is the car that we are expecting to set the pace. This but is, let's see if it works. This but is a good drive. I've got to say, Ben Mitchell really, he got the most out of that car he could have got out of it. On the limit. It's where you need to be when you're in the shootout, the finale, the final. Beautiful. Taking every bit of the track as well. He really was using everything there was to be had there. Great uh, driver in historic racing, winner of various championships. And I think he delivered a, a great drive. Nick Heidfeld, though, uh, things didn't go so well for him in the former e car. Jensen Button doing a good job. Enjoying um, the sun. Indeed. So he's still up there in the mix, but they are all going to be watching to see how Max Chilton gets on when he does his run in the final part in the McMurtry Automotive Spearling, which is, I know, a very strange noise to talk about but it is a car that is incredibly rapid so where we are right now uh, Richard Leitz being shown on there as the fastest at this stage yeah but we're moving on to the McMurty automotive spearling 0 to 60 in under 1.4 seconds when that fans working perfectly Alex Summers did a great time with it yesterday and then we had a 39.14 from Max Chilton listen to this Ready to go. And it's nearly blast off. Look at that. 
So the suction down to the track. Max Chilton, then he looks pretty calm in there at the moment, but he won't be in the minute once this thing builds up. In turn one, look at the way it sucks itself straight down onto the track. Yeah, you can see how the fan in the back, that creates 2,000 kilos of downforce. It grips the car down. It's got 1,000 horsepower. It's a tiny car as well. 3.51 seconds over the first 100 metres. 17.34 seconds at intermediate one. And I can't hardly read it out as quick as he's getting to these points. At the moment, ooh, there he goes. 28.24. 28.24 at intermediate two. And he's already heading up towards the line. So what's it going to be over the line? Is it going to be a new record of course it must be a new record surely 39.08 he is the fastest ever man on the sunday he's the fastest ever man whatever day of the week yeah, it because is the here previous, at the festival of speed the previous on any was a 39.90 a 39.08 it's quicker than what he did earlier today in practice as well and he's going to get applause i'm sure from some of these top wow. drivers uh, but max himself knows these guys ex-formula one driver himself an indycar driver what a brilliant performance by him it goes to show you the consistency of a top racing driver though 39.14 in his first <laughs> Is today and then 39.08 in today's in the last session in this fine final shootout so close his times so he was pretty much on the limit earlier on today but so, maybe the track was just it looked a little dirtier up the hill as well at the top end of the hill and we know it loses a bit of suction up there so a new record setter of the shootout at the goodwood festival of speed he's taken victory and he has set a new record in this remarkable machine. Max Chilton celebrates then as he extricates himself from this, what is for me, a tiny vehicle. This is the, the fastest tiny vehicle I've ever come across. Quick bow to everybody as well. The Duke of Richmond will be very happy about that because not only did he just do the fastest time, he's also cleaned the track with that big vacuum cleaner underneath it. Yeah, it really does have a vacuum cleaner. It's, it's a fan car. It develops its own downforce. First time that a car has competed like that that since the late 1970s when the Brabham BT 46B was a Grand Prix winner using that kind of system but it's also got electric power as well so that is pass and pass and the Duke of Richmond making his way up to the top of the hill in one of the great classic cars the Mercedes 300 SL to congratulate the drivers at the top of the hill the main event the hill claim Hill Climb final has been done and dusted, and as we may have expected, the McMurtry Automotive Spieling, nothing to be taken away from it. It was our expectations. The car has had to perform throughout all of the week, and it has performed mightily on the day when it mattered. Max Chilton, steely-eyed, it's kind of... He put himself in the zone, and he made it work with that fantastic 39.08, 149 mile an hour at the top of the hill, yeah, incredible. I've never seen anything like that, I must say. Yeah, well, it was certainly a little bit of a, a amazing. It's a silver car that uh, we've got of different eras now. And this, this little car created by uh, a team some over about the last four years that they've put this together. So David McMurtry, who put together a team of former F1 engineers to create a high performance car. And that's what they have done with this machine. It creates 2,000 kilograms of downforce at the, before it moves. That fan creating two tons of downforce in kilos before it even gets away off the line. And it grips it to the road so effectively then uh, that with the horsepower it has from that electric power as well, it is massively rapid. And they were inspired to build a car the footprint, the size of an F1 car from the 1960s. So it is a single seater, as you were saying, but it's built to that same sort of dimensions as the Formula One cars of the 1960s. It is capable of massive high G cornering due to that downforce that it creates as well. And Max Chilton, what a day it is for Max, who has taken the top spot and the record. And he will be congratulated by the Duke of Richmond here, who has put oh, this event on one Benny more time. <laughs> oh, isn't that lovely to oh, see? Thank you so much. The best party in the world. Best well party Max, in the world. I'm going to have to jump in. You are officially the fastest man ever up that hill. Yeah, I mean, I never thought that was going to happen. Um, I've had, had a pleasure of coming to this amazing festival since I was four years of age. Um, I've known this man my whole life. He's the most generous and I'm jealous of how he can remember everyone's names. He remembers your name like he really genuinely knows who you are, which he does, but he's such a lovely uh, man, great family, uh, honored to be here. And as I said, I've been coming since I was four. And if someone had said one day, 
you're going to beat every single person that's ever come up that hill. I wouldn't have believed you. So it's, uh, it's a real honor. I didn't sleep last night. I got one hour of sleep because I was so stressed. But it's a major a bit of pressure makes diamonds, as they say. Imagine what you could do with a full night's sleep. Yes, exactly that. But super proud of the McMurtry Automotive. I know you've got the Union Jack down there, British engineered, British design, British manufactured and British driver. So I couldn't be any happier. Your Grace, you must remember Nick Heidfeld's run in 1999. I mean, this was something else, wasn't it? I know, you just look at the way the technology's come along. I mean, that, that run of Nick's was amazing. You know, 160 to the top corner, everyone was going, oh my God, this is so fast. It was epic, but to see the way this, 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 this wonderful car's gone up and the, and the way the whole McMurtry team have put this together over the last couple of years, it's been, you know, two year. Amazing they've done it in two years. I think they weren't even expecting it. Max's drive, absolutely epic. So we're just thrilled to have such a great British, British technology, British driver winning this great event. Well, do present Max with the champagne, and we're gonna gonna get Roman Duma, Nick Heidfeld, to come on in.